Hey, mateys. <laughs> this is here's another Lux Brush and Ember recording. Arg. Uh, darling, this cruise is absolutely divine. Isn't this crazy? We're gonna have so much fun! Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 22. P P O V Pony Point of View. Wow, this was a wonderful episode. The ending was a little weak, but it was a wonderful episode. <laughs> oh, I love how we started with Rarity's point of view and ended with Applejack. So, in a way, going from the most outlandish to the most truthful. In a way. Because all of them had a lot of point of view in them, but I think Applejack's was the most close to Earth. Applejack seemed the least embellished, though it was still colored by her point of view, which was kind of the point of the episode. I mean, as we were watching Rarity's version of the story, I kept saying, I want to see Applejack's. Mm -hmm. We were both basically saying that I want to see the others, but I really enjoyed Rarity's point of view, <laughs> especially her eye packed light. Yeah, we're going to know the others are going to exaggerate that, but it's probably going to be pretty close to truth. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. there's no way you fit all of those lovely hors d'oeuvres in that one bag. Yeah. Uh, what a crazy and wonderful pony you are, Rarity. Also, I liked how someone pointed out in one of the groups I hang out with that the amount of times that in Applejack's point of view, Rarity said darling is about how often fanfiction writers make her say darling. That is interesting. And not something I would have known. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one who reads a lot of fan fiction. Not a lot lately, mainly because I've been busy, but I, I used to read a lot of fan fiction. A lot of fan fiction. Silly me, I buy regular fiction. I could be reading fan fiction for free. There's something wrong with this scenario. <laughs> well, I think it's because it's on a screen compared to paper. Yeah, screens tear my eyes more quickly. Oh. Back on topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Give me a spin around. I had a point and I lost it. All right. Well, how about the rarity with crab mean? Oh, yes. There was this meme a while ago of apparently rarity attacking giant crabs. And apparently that either that meme went into this episode or they were just referencing sea life in general. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, this this episode was just so nice and rarity. Oh my god. I gotta say her point of view was my favorite. Her point of view was very fun because she was calm like almost the entire time and just wanted to do these very kind things for her friends and was playing along with Pinkie Pie where when we get to Pinkie Pie's version of the story, Pinkie Pie felt like she was being condescending. Back to current in time rarity, the return of the fainting couch. Also, that ice cream did not look like vanilla oat swirl. It looked like mint chocolate chip. Which was the same thing she actually had last time, even though she said vanilla oat swirl. Yeah, there's no way vanilla oat swirl would look like that. That was mint chocolate chip. Or, for the stout, it was mint cookie. Mm hmm So, yeah. <laughs> she is just crazy. Pinkie Pie's was pretty good too, though jumping over to Applejack's, that, that is, if that's seriously how Applejack sees Pinkie Pie, okay. <laughs> I'm so much fun! <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize Applejack had such poor views of her friends. <laughs> I know, that's kind of painful, or it, was it colored in post by the frustration of the boat capsizing? Because those were all pretty negative views, and supposedly you guys are all friends. Mm hmm In this episode, I think there may be a Chekhov's gun they haven't fired yet. A phrase meaning something you introduce into a story and then never pick up on. Because it's bad not to fire a Chekhov's gun, as it were. Because Lux's theory, as we got partway into the episode, was that the reason the boat sank was Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash, because all weather in Equestria is Pegasi-controlled. 
Well, my theory was that they were responsible for the store, not that they were responsible for the cap size. And my theory was that Twilight would go, oh yeah, those two are out that way, I'll ask them for what actually happened. And speaking of something else that neither of us caught that apparently was in the episode was Bubbles. I don't remember in any of the three renditions of, okay, this is what really happened, that any of the three ponies actually said the word Bubbles. I thought for some reason Twilight was drawing olives on the chalkboard. Yeah, both me and her go, those are olives. Why is she drawing olives? I know olives go along with the fancy food, but what? why are those important? And then, Bubbles? Really? None of them mentioned Bubbles. I know it was in the animation that I didn't notice at all. <laughs> Usually I catch things like that in animation, but it wasn't prominent enough. It was just Bubbles. Okay, yeah, I expect Bubbles to come up when things fall in the water. Because they bring air down with them. <laughs> yeah, so it just kind of made sense. Mm -hmm. But going back to, okay, it's the sea creature's fault. Rarity's the one who brought cucumber sandwiches on the boat. If she had made different hors d'oeuvres, then the sea creature would not have grabbed any of the food when it fell overboard. Mm -hmm. Another thing that was actually embellished, now that I think about it, was the size of the wave. The size of the thing that capsized them. Because in their story, it's this huge, giant wave. In this they... huge, giant storm. And based on what actually happens when they toss the cucumber sandwiches into the water, it's a small, little wave. Which makes me wonder, did they exaggerate the size of the ship they were on? Because mm -hmm. all three of them were actually pretty consistent about the ship size. If it wasn't for the fact that it sank, I'd almost say it was the dinghy they went out on with Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I also noticed something else, that the um, placement of Applejack, Rarity, and Pinkie Pie changes based on the story. Like, Applejack's only by the dock in two of the point of views. In one of the point of views, it was Pinkie Pie in the same position as Applejack. And sticking with the boat capsizing, we see that the water was incredibly shallow. How was there enough room for the boat to actually sink? Also, how was there enough room for a sea creature of the size of that one to get under the boat and capsize it? Well, I'm thinking they made it out just as far as Twilight did when they were all in the same boat together. And when they got capsized over, they were pushed near shore. The wave pushed them enough near shore that they flipped over. Also... Something that I just remembered from the episode is Twilight left the rope untied, but didn't put it on the boat. And I thought that was going to be something important to what also made the boat capsize. Yes, because when you unmoor the boat, you're supposed to store the rope. Mm-hmm. Because you don't want it catching while you're leaving. Mm-hmm. And you need to coil it neatly on the boat so that nobody trips over it. Mm-hmm. Ah. <sighs> so... I'm pretty sure we've already go over, gone over some of your nitpicks. Any big ones? No, because the stories aren't going to match. That's part of the elegance of the episode, is that everyone sees things differently. And it's also a lesson that everyone views events through their own perspectives and filters. So no two people are going to see things exactly the same way. Because we've all grown up with different experiences, so we all have our own different point of view. Exactly. That's actually a rather complex lesson for a children's show. Mm-hmm. Though speaking of the children's show aspect, they really should have mentioned the bubbles. I'm trying to figure out, did they leave it out on accident because of editing, or did they just forget to add it in except for the references in the storyboard? Oh, and speaking of references, Rarity's dress was from Titanic. Which makes me wonder if the overdone, stylish ship captain version from Pinkie Pie's story was maybe Love Boat reference? I never watched the series. It could be. I'm pretty sure it was a reference from Luxury Liners, period, and the whole fancy captain thing. Mm. How it's usually depicted in shows. Oh, wait a minute. I wonder if that was actually on that episode. Luxury Liners, no, no, that, no that was on a different... I think she was referencing the Titanic because she said Luxury Liners never sink. Yes, that was a Titanic reference. Not as in the movie Titanic, but as in the actual Titanic, because I think she actually says that in the one where she was wearing the captain's outfit. I would have to go back and watch. My memory's probably a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> oh, so any other points you'd like to bring up? Um, the use of the pets as messengers. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about Gummy. That was my favorite thing. Is like, where's Gummy's note? Then I saw him roll over. Oh my god! She actually wrote it on Gummy. I'm not sure if that's cool or mean. Please don't be permanent ink. 
I also love how Twilight did the same thing. <laughs> she wrote it on Gummy to send the message back to Pinkie Pie. You know this because Pinkie Pie says, you know, if it wasn't time for Gummy's bath, I wouldn't have found the message. <laughs> exactly. But I wonder if she wrote it on Gummy because Gummy has no teeth. Winona had the note in her mouth, and Opal had it tucked in her collar. Hmm. Gummy has no teeth, and Gummy does not wear a collar. Hmm. Maybe it's just because Pinkie Pie was afraid he'd gum it to death and get it all moist. Yeah, the note that Winona was carrying was a little slobbery. Mm-hmm. It was a pretty good episode. And like we said, we felt, at least I felt, the ending was a little weak because of the idea I came up with of Twilight going to talk to Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash to find out what exactly happened because they could see it from an above angle and weren't emotionally involved in the whole thing so they could see it from a more clear perspective. Also, the size of the swell that happened when Twilight took them out is like, okay, if the stories that Rarity, Applejack, and Pinkie Pie told all showed the size of the ship correctly, how did that little swell cause the boat to capsize? Well, if it hit it from the side instead of straight on, like in the image, it would have an easier time of overturning the boat. But still. Yeah. And also, if the sea creature is that friendly, wouldn't it have gone to check on them to make sure they were all right because it was an accident? Hmm. Maybe that's how they got to shore and they didn't realize it because none of them realized there was a monster there until Twilight pointed it out. I did like how gentle the sea creature was. And how they were like, oh yeah, okay, <laughs> during the hug, it's like, okay, yeah, bring it in, you big softy. Oh. It picks up the whole boat. Oh yeah, I really like that. Especially the part at the end where they were all now enjoying their cruise and doing something different, and the sea monster was like trying to hit the pinata. Mm -hmm. well, it was just a really nice slice of life episode. And it was an excellent way to show about different points of view. Another thing I enjoyed was Twilight's use of it's a friendship emergency because she was telling the truth, yet at the same time she was tricking everyone. Mm -hmm. It was very truthful because it was a friendship emergency. Yes. So that's why each of them came because it was a friendship emergency and the friend that none of them are particularly upset with asked them. They're all a tiny bit upset with her because... She kept questioning their stories and going on to the next pony and the next pony. I'm actually surprised about that, because Twilight kind of knows the scientific method, and in a way you could apply that to this situation. So she's actually affecting her results by telling the previous person that this person already told me their story. Yeah, that's really not how she should have done it, and I was surprised when that's what happened in story. Because by telling the next pony that the previous pony said it's all your fault, you're just intensifying the argument that they're all having. Not just that, you're affecting how their story will actually play out. Because they're going to do their best to counter that, consciously or subconsciously. Yep, so she should have just asked each one of them individually without mentioning that she already talked to the others. Yes, and if they wanted to bring up the previous conversations for the sake of the audience, just have that conversation between Twilight and Spike. Because we have Twilight and Spike conversation moments regarding the differences in the story. So that could have been done with all the aspects. Also, another thing to bring up, this is another episode that shows how little regard ponies have for currency. Because they found sunken treasure, and they put ice cream and probably priceless artifact goblets. I didn't see them get washed. She took them straight out of the treasure chest and put ice cream on them. They were in the... If that was salt water, then there's an encrustation of salt. If it was fresh water, still, it was probably not drinking water, even in the MLP universe. Mm-hmm. I didn't even think about that. I was just thinking of the fact that you're taking these priceless artifacts you just found and you're using them. Oh my god, they have no sense of value. <laughs> And another thing closer to the beginning, once again reiterating Spike's crush on Rarity, huh, I polish my scales for nothing. And the eye roll from Twilight. I very much doubt Rarity would have noticed, and I would think polishing your scales would fall under general hygiene. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's wrap things up. What are your thoughts as a whole on this episode? 
very much enjoyed it. The issues, I think, were minor. It seems like a glaring omission to not have any of the three participants in the cruise actually verbally mention the bubbles. That it was up to the audience to see it. And without it being stated, how did Twilight know? Yeah, I think they were going off the fact that Twilight heard the entire story. We were just seeing a visualization of what Twilight heard. So since everyone had to describe everything, Twilight was getting the description that included the bubbles. But the audience never got the description except for the two other things that were mentioned. The crashing wave and cucumber sandwiches. Those were both verbally in the story. The bubbles were not, or they weren't prominent enough in the animation for anyone to really notice. Also, it still really felt like a weak ending, showing, I mean, yes, showing that it wasn't actually anybody's fault. I'd still like to reiterate that technically that makes it Rarity's fault for bringing Cucumber on a voyage. There are plenty of other little hors d'oeuvre teased type sandwiches that she could have made that were still vegetarian, so they'd be okay for the MLP universe that didn't involve Cucumber. Also, how does a sea creature have a taste for cucumber, which is a land-grown vegetable, unless it happens to like sea cucumber and regular cucumbers somehow taste like sea cucumbers? Or it has a taste for it because um, it's experienced before because people have tossed it overboard, and they found out in the past that these creatures like this. So from others of the species of this creature, other voyagers have probably found out in the past that this particular creature likes cucumber. Because creatures can like something they've never encountered before after they've eaten it once. Yes. But if that's somewhat common knowledge, then wouldn't it be common knowledge to not take cucumber on a ship? Well, maybe, maybe it's not common knowledge like that. Maybe it's just common knowledge for people who read books. A lot. <laughs> Are you done with your thoughts? Mm-hmm. Well, overall, I enjoyed the episode. I really enjoyed Rarity's version of the tale. Yeah, I know, you would think Pinkie Pie's version. No, no, I enjoyed Rarity's most because it was just so Rarity. <laughs> uh, I felt the ending was a little weak, mainly because I thought of a better ending. <laughs> what you felt was a better, better ending. ending. I, I wanted something a little more impactful than it was an accident caused by a third party. Mm -hmm. oh. Overall, it was enjoyable. And I can't wait for more. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony. French was Magic. Season 6, Episode 22. PPOV. Pony Point of View. Alright, and you can join Lux for High Adventure by seeing where you go when his Patreon is actually funded. Fun and games? What could be more fun than supporting an artist you like? And what could be more high class than being a patron of the arts? Also, uh, need an adventure or a little luxury cruise with a lower price tag? Click subscribe and join us on our journey. <laughs>